Is he calling an election this weekend? Uh, the election will be in mid-May. <laughs> You're not answering the question. Are you addressing the cost of living or is it just the cost of winning? No, it's just about the cost of living. And a stronger future. Why should not voters see this close to $9 billion in temporary one-off payments, one-off excise cuts as nothing short of one big massive pre-election bribe? What, you, you don't think these cost of living pressures are real? I know they're real. Today was all supposed to be about selling the budget in the time-honoured way. It was probably inevitable with an election imminent that a lot of the media's questions would be about election timing. What the Prime Minister couldn't possibly have anticipated, though, was that the process of selling the budget was about to be derailed. He is adept at running with the foxes and hunting with the hounds, lacking the moral compass and having no conscience. His actions conflict with his portrayal as a man of faith. He has used his so-called faith as a marketing advantage. It is his way or the highway, an autocrat, a bully who has no moral compass. You may have heard some of the colourful aspects of Liberal Senator Conchetta Fiovanti Will's astonishing attack on the Prime Minister in the Senate last night. Many have zeroed in on her claims the PM is a bully, but it was a much more widespread series of claims than that, with statements like this. There is a putrid stench of corruption emanating from the New South Wales division of the Liberal Party. And I look forward to the day when Hawke will be required to give evidence under oath to explain his corrupt conduct. In my public life, I have met ruthless people. Morrison tops the list, followed closely by Hawke. Morrison is not fit to be Prime Minister, and Hawke certainly is not fit to be a minister. The Senator also had Immigration Minister Alex Hawke, the PM's proxy in New South Wales State Party matters, in her sights, and accused Scott Morrison of, quote, bullying his way to a situation where the next election has been put at risk, all to save Hawke's career. She also accused Alex Hawke of being involved in fraudulent activities and corruption involving branch membership records. Fear of Auntie Wills said the controversies engulfing the New South Wales division in recent months had disgusted the party rank and file. They have lost faith in the party. They want to leave. They don't like Morrison and they don't trust him. They continue to despair at our prospects at the next federal election and they blame Morrison for this. Our members do not want to help in the upcoming election. The fallout from this bitter factional brawl over New South Wales pre-selections comes in many forms. As the Senator said, it poses problems of rank-and-file manpower on the ground during the looming election campaign. It means the government still has to nominate candidates in some seats, meaning it will be difficult to call an election for at least some days. And, of course, it derailed the budget sales task as the PM found himself fending off questions about this attack, which he suggested was simply bitterness on the Senator's part over being dumped from a safe spot on the New South Wales Senate ticket. But Scott Morrison's day was about to get even worse. He is a bully and I back the Senator up completely with that. He is a bully because I have experienced it myself. He's a man, you do it my way or there's no way. And there were more contributions which had the effect of blunting all the talk of the past week about how bullying was a problem in the Labor Party. It seems it's not a man thing, a faction thing, a party thing, but it certainly can be a political thing. I think of the premature death of my colleague Kimberly Kitching and one thing that haunts me is that so easily could have been me. We can honour her memory by not making this a political issue but by fixing it. So politics is a better place particularly for women. The Prime Minister had agreed to make his first appearance on 7.30 tonight in almost a year but cancelled at lunchtime due to what his office said was a clash. It was left to Treasurer Josh Frydenberg to try to get the budget conversation back on track. This is a budget for the times, and this budget will deliver a strong economy and a stronger future. Though the Treasurer seemed to spend at least as much time talking about Labor as he did about his own budget. And a Labor Party led by Anthony Albanese that has largely hidden from view for the last three years, trying to sneak into government with little more than a false and fanciful promise that he would govern like Bob Hawke and John Howard. 
the opposite would be true. When I bought the business um, 20 months ago, I was paying $1.19 for diesel. Um, now I'm paying $2.25 to $2.30. The message the government wants voters like Luke Haggart to focus on is its budget pitch on the cost of living, in particular the cut to the fuel excise for a six-month period. It's one of Luke's main business expenses and his ability to raise his own prices is constrained. Unfortunately, in my industry, there's a ceiling. Um, it, it's, it's deemed what is appropriate to pay, there's a level. I had my prices up to where they are before the fuel went crazy, so I've had to wear that extra fuel cost every week. He's sceptical the six-month measure will make a real dent in prices. Well, I don't think we'll see it. If we see it, it won't be for very long. You might see it at the, at the pump for a week. Um, but A, you know, petrol stations like the, like the margin, they say there's no money in fuel, I don't believe that. Um, but B, it's only 20 cents. Fuel's jumped by $1.20. So what does 20 cents do? I'm still 80% I'm still above where I was before. So while that's great, it doesn't get passed along to my net profit because I dare say it'll get eaten up. Look, there's many avenues that they can help. The biggest, the, the biggest cost, in my opinion, to a young family like us that needs to be looked at and can be measured and reduced and help, help us is childcare. Ali Fortuna returned to work full-time in real estate after having her first child, Evie. But when the second child came along, the calculation changed. Throwing a second child in, it was, there was just no way that we could do full-time childcare for both kids. Uh, so hence why we've decided you know, that I will uh, work part-time and now going down the consulting um, route. I would definitely be looking to, to go back into the workforce more um, if, if childcare was more affordable. Um, but with the two kids in, in daycare uh, full-time, it's not really an option uh, for us. Ali says her childcare costs have gone up $12 a day in the last year alone. And while she says the cost of living measures in the budget, like the $420 tax rebate, are welcome, they're not sufficient. $420 doesn't go very far. It, it wouldn't even cover the costs of two kids in daycare for two days. I'd certainly like to see um, the costs of, of childcare um, further subsidised. To date, there's no sign of a move on any major new initiative on childcare from the government. It seems strange, given Labor has signalled it will run hard on childcare as a cost of living, productivity and workforce issue. Both sides of politics may say the election is about jobs and wages, but their approaches to the issues are starting to look quite different. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.